Hello, my friends. Are you ready to use your rocks and pebbles to tell the stories of Jesus? Today, we're going to tell the story of the crucifixion and do it in rocks. When we tell the stories of Jesus, there is one story that is very hard to tell, and that is the story of the crucifixion. When I prepared this tutorial for you, I cried because in taking rocks and pebbles and depicting the crucifixion was very, very sad for me to put Jesus on a cross, even if just by rocks. So if you are sad when you do this, it's okay. Because the next story after this one is when Jesus comes back to life. And that's the happiest story of them all. But today we're going to do this one first. So you might say a little prayer first and ask Heavenly Father to protect your heart and help you to Feel the love that Jesus has for you and everyone. That's what I do. I prayed just before I started this tutorial. So we are going to make that. And you don't have to use rocks if you don't want to. I have a lot of fantastic rocks because I've been collecting them for a long time. And anytime I go outside and I see a long rock, I collect it. So I have lots to choose from, but you might not have a lot yet. So I just want you to know that you could use anything to make a cross. Here's a stick I found out in the yard. Really neat stick because it has all these neat things sticking out of it and all the texture. So I picked up two sticks and I thought, you know what? I could just break this one. Where should we break it? How about right here? So I could just break this stick and put it down and I could put another one right on top of it. I like that better than this one even. So that's good. So there we have it. We've got a cross that we made just with our sticks in the backyard. So you can do that. You could go get two spoons or forks or knives and put them together and make a cross. Or you could use anything that you have that you want to. That's a neat cross. I also found some bark from a tree and I could break this up to be what I want. And I could simply put it together and I'd have a cross there. That's a really neat looking cross, don't you think? When I saw this bark, I had to take it home because it's just so interesting looking. So we can make a cross that way. And I even had my friend take this wood that was outside, broke it, and I had him cut a notch. So if you have somebody around that knows how to use a saw or a pocket knife and can cut a notch in, then you can have a really neat cross just with two pieces of wood. If you don't cut the notches in, then they tend to fall over. <laughs> so it's really neat. If you're going to have this for a long time, then you could have somebody cut the notch in. So crosses are very fun to make because they're so easy. Um, but I want to make them with rocks today. And if you have some rocks, you could make them that way too. So let me clear this off. Or maybe you can just watch this one today and then you'll know what rocks to look for when you go looking. So I like to just brush this off and start fresh. Okay, so I found a whole bunch of neat rocks, but let me show you my most favorite one, this rock. They're hard to find these long rocks, but every once in a while they'll just be sitting there. And when I was making this, I thought, you know, this, could be Jesus. And if I was putting him on a cross, it would take a very big rock, which I don't have. So we're going to just make it up. We'll pretend like this is the, this is the pole that would go all the way up, like our cross. So remember this cross that we made as an example? Well, I could have 
if I had a cross and then put the rock on it, it would just fall over. So I'm going to pretend I'm going to put my rock down and I'm going to use this and this will be like my stick, like the post that goes all the way up. And then I'm going to get another rock and use that as my post on top. And so it just looks like there's one in the back, but there's not really because I didn't have enough rocks to do that. And here's the head of our sweet savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, it just makes me, it makes me just so sad to see this, but it's an important story. And why do you think this story is so important? Well, if Jesus would not have come down and died for us and taken all of our mistakes and sins on himself, then we would be lost. We would be sad forever. We'd be miserable forever. And so Jesus came and he loves us so much he didn't want us to be miserable. And he knew we'd make mistakes. And so he willingly came to earth and willingly died for us. And that's why this is such an important story. But fortunately, it gets better because after he dies on the cross, you know the story that he rose from the tomb after three days. And that's the happy, happy news because that means we will also rise after we die. So death is not forever. It's just a moment. It's just a doorway that we pass through. So this little heart that I found, heart-shaped rock, I thought was just perfect, especially because it has that break in it, like his heart was breaking when he was on the cross. So we'll put that there too. Now, if you remember in the story, Jesus wasn't the only one. There were two others that were also crucified next to him. And these guys were not the best. They had made some really poor choices in life. And they needed Jesus very badly because they didn't. They needed somebody to save them too. So we're going to put them up here. And I'm, I'm doing this pretty quickly for you, but we could have used... I have so many rocks, but I prepared this ahead of time so you could see how we could put this together. And then I'm going to show you after I get these up, other choices we could make. Look at this neat rock. So different. When I found it, I had no idea what I would use it for. But then today when I needed to find a thief, I found him. So there's him. And then I also found a post, a, a tree that they put them on. And we'll just put the little feet up here. Oh, if they'll stay. Sometimes you have to use a little bit of glue to make them stay. Hmm, let's turn that rock over and maybe it will be happier. No rock wants to depict the crucifixion. But we'll put that there. I picked out all of these rocks so that I could show you. So I practiced ahead of time. That's why they look so good. The first time you make a cross, you might choose a rock. Let's just pick one out. You might choose a rock and then you might put a head on it. And then you might put some arms on it. And you might say to yourself, well, that doesn't look very good. <laughs> and if you say that, that's just because it's out of proportion. Like this head looks a little bit big for this body. So then I go get all of my circle rocks and I just start trying out different rocks. And I say, well, does that head look better? And I think, oh, that does look a little bit better. But maybe even a smaller one would look better. And I think, oh, I like that even better. So you just keep trading out rocks until you find what you love. So like these arms seem really fat for this long skinny stick. So I'm going to try thinner arms, but that's only because I have so many rocks. And there, these are a little bit thinner and maybe I like that better. And maybe I decide, you know, this long, this rock is just too long. I don't want one quite that long. So I'll look through my rocks and I'll say, well, that's a little shorter and I'll try that one. 
And then I say, you know what, that looks pretty good. I like that much better. So it's all about just trying different rocks until you get what you love. For example, I was trying with these arms, I was really having a hard time because I just wanted those to be just perfect. So here was one I was thinking about using because he looks really like he's got big muscles there. And I really like that arm. And then I found this one too that I thought was pretty neat. And I thought, well, but I kind of wanted it to be a little more even. So then I didn't use that rock after all. And because he didn't have big buff, I thought, well, I'll try this other one. So you can see that, oops, so sorry. You can see that just trying out different things, eventually you'll get something that you really like. But it takes a lot of patience. And then sometimes I'll make a piece like this and I'll let it sit there for days and days and days because I might be outside and I might find a different rock and I'll come in and say, oh, I like that rock and I'll trade it for one that, a different one. And so over time, your art gets prettier and prettier as you keep replacing it with the rocks that you really love. I want to show you another trick. Outside, you're going to find gravel or some people call it pea gravel, P-E-A, like uh, peas in a pod, uh, like snow peas that you eat because they're little tiny things. And so little tiny rocks they call gravel. And the gravel is fantastic. I will go sit in the gravel and get a big scoop of it and take it home. And then I'll come and I'll sort it out. And I'll say, uh, okay, that's kind of a long one and that's long and that's kind of a circle and that's kind of a circle. Those sort of are, that's kind of oblong. Here's another long one long, 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 kind of circles. Mm, that's kind of a teardrop. Ooh, that's a treasure. We could even put a teardrop over here with Jesus crying. What do you think of that? Or we could put his teardrop right over here by his face so we could all remember that he was crying. Um, ooh, and this one's kind of a triangle. And triangles are fun because they look like shoes or feet. So I always keep my triangles. There's another long one. Long. Oops. Um, sort of circle-y, kind of. Longer circle. Long, long circle. And hopefully we'll find triangles too. And that's just because we didn't get our triangles out of here. Here's a neat triangle. And that's kind of a triangle too. Like these are triangles. And that's kind of a triangle. That's longer. So you can just go through and sort out your rocks and then you can use these. So when I wanted some hands, I just went in here like this is a neat, really neat hand because it almost looks like a thumb and fingers and I could use that. Do you like that one better? But if I'm going to use one that size, I'm going to look for another one that's a similar size. That's a similar size, but it's white and that's gray and I kind of like them to be the same color, but it doesn't matter. You could use any color you want, huh? So I just wanted you to see that the gravel is very useful. And when you just sort it out. So some days you don't want to make a picture. You just want to get your rocks and sort them and find little containers you can put them in to keep them separated. Um, these longer ones that we just found are how I found my feet. So I had looked for a bunch of little triangles and that's how I got those feet. So maybe if I didn't want these long feet, I could use these two triangles instead and that would look really great too. So it's so important to find your long rocks and your circle rocks because they are used for so many things. And when you start doing cats and dogs and birds, you need ears and beaks and tails. <laughs> and these things really, work out well for that. So you need tiny rocks and then your bigger rocks too. So I hope some of those suggestions help. Um, yeah, so I hope that it was okay that I talked about some of these things while we're talking about the crucifixion. It's such a sad situation with Calvary, Calvary and the cross and Jesus being killed, although he let them kill him so that he could perform this great act for us so that we can go home. It's sad. 
and it breaks my heart. But it's important to understand what happened so that when he comes back to life and is resurrected, we understand that story too. And we know that every single one of us can live again and be free and happy and joyful no matter what has happened to us because of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I know he loves us. I know he loves you. And if you will pray and talk to him often every single day, you will feel happier in your heart and you'll have more love to give other people. Okay, well, thanks for joining me. I'm Patty Rokas at rockstellstories.com. And you can go to my website to get more tutorials and videos. And you can go to my YouTube channel, Patty Rokas, uh, to see more videos. And that's P-A-T-T-I-R-O-K-U-S. Okay, thank you, my friends. I love you. Please know that, that Jesus Christ loves you and did all of this for all of us. And so learning these stories is really important really matters. And maybe you can tell these stories to your family and friends. I love you. Mm.